Hey YouTube world, it's Liam the Deaf Doom Metalhead bringing you a new video. This time it's going to be a collection update because I haven't done one in ages. Well, it doesn't feel like I've done one in ages. Uh, I didn't think I had that much to show because I have been telling people I haven't got to buy much. Um, but yeah, I fucked up on that big time. So I've got quite a bit of records to show and some CDs. Some of them are gifts. Um, some of them are pre-orders that I paid for yonks ago. But when you're bored at home and you kind of get tempted to go on Amazon or your mate sends you a link to something that's really cheap it just yeah just ruins me um but luckily a lot of these are prepaid for so I'm, I'm doing all right at the moment um I'm budgeting well but anyway let's start with this one so this one um was one I've wanted for a long time uh when I started collecting vinyl again I kind of went through my list of albums I've wanted for a long time and you know I've listened to on mp3 and that kind of thing and make sure I get them because I kind of feel like I've been listening to them digitally digitally for years and I, I should own them by now um, and this is one of them but then I discovered it's really expensive for the first press uh, but it's just been re-released again I think for the third time um, I'm not sure if it came out this month or the month beforehand but that is Paradise Lost the Plague uh, Within which is you know came out i think in 2015 this is a 2020 re-release and there's only 2000 copies of this one um what's cool about it is it's two discs one side is etched um comes with a nice book you know and for me this is probably one of the best albums they've put out since going back to that old style with the death metal vocals the more gothic -y feel uh the more doomy approach as well on the tracks none of that depeche mode stuff and uh, yeah, I, this is probably one of my top favourite Paradise Lost albums, maybe. Um, yeah, the earlier stuff's obviously great. And like this year, they've released a new album. They're putting out Draconian Times again. And, and they've just released this one again. Um, and for me, I mean, I love this album, but it's not a weak track on it for me. Really doomy, really gothic vibey. Um, especially in the vocal styles, how Nick does like death metal growls and then does his traditional kind of singing voice. But then mixes it up with some shouty stuff. And yeah, I mean the artwork's awesome as well. The vinyl comes on its clear smoked effect, which really goes well with the album artwork. And I'll show you the etched disc as well. Because it looks awesome. And yeah, and it sounds amazing. And yeah, I'm so happy I got it. Because I was originally going to buy the CD copy and just kind of give up. And knowing I'd never get it. Because um, they go for silly money, the first presses of these. Like 50, 60 quid. And I'm not paying that. Um, so this one, yeah, only just come out maybe a month or two ago. I don't know. I found it on eBay thinking it was an original press, but obviously it's not. And there's the etch side. See that? Yeah, a brilliant album. So if you haven't checked this one out, you must check it out because it is very, very strong. Some of their best riffs they've done for years. And, uh, you know, there's only 2,000 copies, so I would jump on it pretty quick because I imagine it will sell out. So, yeah, that's that one. Now this one was uh, recommended to me from a friend um, on Instagram called Harry who sent me some stuff in the post before and he basically messaged me saying you'll like this band, no questions. And he was spot on, like, I absolutely love it. Um, and it's probably one of the best albums I've heard this year and it'll probably be in my top 10 by the end of it because it has everything I love about music. So it's got death, doom, really heavy guitars, brilliant vocals, but it's also got a different kind of texture to it because it's got some kind of synthy keyboard stuff in there, which I, normally I hate. But this one and the next one is probably going to show that I actually quite like that sound and I didn't realise that. And that is uh, The Fires in the Distance new album. I think this is their debut for this year. Echoes from Deep November came out last month, I believe. Uh, it came out through Prosthetic Records. And yeah, there's only 300 copies of this album, and I think they're already into their second press, because it's been quite popular. So yeah, they kind of incorporate very technical guitar solos and melodies, because their guitar is shit up. Um, and the guitar tone is really low end and chuggy, and it's got loads of atmosphere. That's what they do really well on this album, is bags of atmosphere. And like the key sections and that kind of bring it out, and you know, layer the tracks really nicely. And it sounds brilliant for this time of year especially. Artwork is awesome. The, um, the only downside was the LP on the picture. Because I, obviously I know when you do a pressing, you're not going to guarantee that picture is going to look exactly the same as what you're going to buy. 
Um, but this one looks nothing like the picture, which I thought was quite funny. It doesn't bother me, but it, it was quite funny. It does go with the artwork, though. Um, it's supposed to be a bit more golden in the middle. And I believe the second pressing, they've gone for a totally different colour scheme. But it sounds amazing. It sounds absolutely huge. Um, and it's definitely something people should check out. If you're like me, you like you definitely do, but you like that more me melodic, moody side to it. It's not slow and horrible. It's more atmospheric and you know the riffs are really really well written and like I say the vocals sit really nicely and yeah brilliant brilliant album so Harry cheers for sending or recommending me that album because I did not know anything about it until he told me so yeah that's fires in the distance now this one completely surprised me um never heard of them before apart from maybe what they used to be like um, and it's something again I never checked out either but the artwork intrigued me and I went and checked it out and initially I was like, nah, not for me. But then I persevered with it and I listened to it in the car with my eldest son and we were driving in the dark because obviously it's, uh, you know, dark falls quite early now here in the UK. And we both loved it and I kept listening to it and listening to it. Then he kept asking me to put it on wherever we went. And that is over with their latest one, Flowers of Evil. Now, these guys used to be a black metal band for maybe one album, and then they completely shifted from that. Um, this is more pop. Um, it's certainly like pop music to me, but more dark and ambient style. And yeah, I don't know what it is about this album I really enjoy. It reminds me of like Duran Duran and stuff like that, which again, people are like, what the fuck do you like stuff like that for? But I, I do, I don't know why, but I do. And this album, and it's very, very popular, and that's the only reason I knew about it, because a lot of people were talking about it. It just musically is very, very different. And it's very easy to listen to. And talking to, like, Andy, my guitarist in my band, he loves this band, didn't know that. Um, my mate Kenny's a big fan of theirs. Um, and they've recommended me other albums, and I've checked it out. And it's just a whole different kind of music I've never, ever listened to before. And it's something I've actually really enjoyed. And I had to get a copy of it because I've listened to it so much on Spotify. Um, and the boy did as well. It's just something we've said, well, okay, we better buy this. Uh, this came out through House of Mythology, which I think is either the label they own or, you know, they're part of it, which is a London-based label. Over a Norwegian. Um, and they were a black metal band, like I say, but not anymore. You know, the, all their albums are very different. And yeah, like tracks on here like uh, Hour of the Wolf, uh, Little Boy, Russian Doll. I mean, every song is really, really strong. But for me, Hour of the Wolf has got that really moody, dark, atmospheric pop sound to it that I, for some reason, really love. Um, and it's completely surprised me. And I've probably listened to this more than any of these records I'm showing today. It's very unusual. So yeah, over. Flowers of Evil. Let's see how many people unsubscribe. <laughs> um, this one was a, a given for me. I heard the, the uh, track... Uh, the second track they released on video and it was a you know instant pre-order uh, and that is a new benediction with uh scriptures came out through nuclear blast this year in october yeah we're nearly out of october so yeah beginning of the month brilliant 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 old school death metal from the uk uh, i believe they're birmingham based uh with the return of dave ingram who is there um but yeah, I mean, a classic band. If you're fans of like Bolt from uh, uh, Napalm Death and all that, you'd already know who this band is. Um, they've been around forever and they are fantastic. Um, Dave Ingram's vocals, especially, like, especially in the older stuff like Transcendent Rubicon, all those kind of albums are classics to me. Um, and I heard this and I thought, eh, it's probably not going to be that good. You know, new albums always kind of disappoint you, especially with the old school death metal bands. They kind of go for a different sound, but the production on this is fucking awesome. Drums are really, really heavy, and they sit just right. The kick drum sounds amazing. The, I mean, their drummer's Italian. Um, they've got, they've got Dave Ingram, I believe, now lives in Denmark, and they've got an Italian drummer. And fuck me, is he a good drummer? And he just the guitars aren't like overcomplicated or anything like that. It's just you know old school sounding, but with a really good production on it. None of the tracks are boring, but Storm Crow is probably the strongest track for me on this album. It's only like three minutes long, if that, and it's just. Fucking heavy as fuck. Got goosebumps when I listened to it the first time. And yeah, not bored of this album at all. Really, really strong album. Every track is killer. 
and if you haven't even if you're a thrash fan you're going to like this because the dave's vocals even though they are aggressive and growly you can understand every word he's saying and it just sounds angry you know there's no death metal gory kind of guttural vocal it's more of a just an angry man shouting and it sounds fucking awesome so go check it out if you haven't you know you can easily find it on youtube easily bought it's a benediction and then this one is one i found cheap on i think amazon just kind of popped up and i thought oh i really like that album um i just bought it and that is Divi Bulgear with Enthroned Darkness Triumphant. I think this is their fourth release. It originally came out in 1997. This is a uh, re-release for 2017. Uh, nuclear Blast release. Divi Bulgear, Norwegian Symphonic Black Metal. Not a fan of Symphonic Black Metal. Maybe a little bit. But for some reason, it's just the riffs on this album are really, really catchy. And it's probably the most accessible album of theirs for me. Like the newer stuff, like especially their last release, I just could not get into at all. Way too keyboard heavy. Um, not natural sounding at all for like a metal band. But this one, you know, it flows really well. It's very fast, very heavy, very blasty. And you know, just just really good. Um, there's the band there, the picture. I was told the other day on one of their albums as well, there's an intro played, I don't know what album it is, but it's on keys, and it's a complete rip-off of a Magnum song. I have to find out what it is, because someone pointed out to me, and we listened to it, and yeah, he was exactly right. And apparently the keyboard the keyboard player at the time of this band admitted that he pretty much ripped it off from Magnum. So really weird how you compare Dimmy Bourgeois and Magnum in the same sentence, but apparently it happened. So yeah, Dimmy Bourgeois. And then this one I pre-ordered instantly when I saw it was coming out for its, I think it's just the fourth repress. This is a 2020 repress and that is Tiamat's Clouds, an absolute iconic album for me. It's got everything I love as a teenager when I was getting into Death and Doom both at the same time. But this one was a lot more accessible for me because it's got that gothic -y vibe, the really clear vocal style, but it's very, very doomy. Um, yeah, and they're absolutely amazing. Swedish, um, this originally came out I think in 1992, yeah, um, through Century Media, and yeah, it's a, just a, an amazing album, it's, it's such a good album, like the track The Sleeping Beauty is the first one I ever heard of theirs, and I was instantly drawn to it, and I've listened to this album ever since, on and off, it's not one you want to keep listening to, because otherwise it loses its impact, you kind of leave it alone for a little while, you re-listen to it, and you just remember how great it is. This is a repressing with the original artwork. I know there's a different version of it, but there's the vinyl was awesome. Kind of on this like purple and black splatter, which I really like. I believe the original reissue is just purple. It's just purple. That'd be really shit if I dropped that, wouldn't it? <laughs> but yeah, I'll try and put it away properly now. Um, yeah, it's just one of them bands. I think they started off as more of a death metal band, then they went into the kind of gothic y doomy death stuff, and then they kind of went even more further with it and went more gothic, and I kind of lost interest at that point. Again, I have to re listen to them because I can't really remember the latter albums or even the earlier ones. I'd always kind of, just kind of go back to this one and Wild Honey and just usually just listen to them. So, yeah, Tiamat, awesome. Um, and this one I discovered on Discogs really cheap and I thought I have to have it as a collection even though it's not as great as the early stuff and I probably should buy the earlier ones before I got this one but I, the price on it was just silly and I thought I'll never find that cheap again even though I don't really like it I like the album um, and that is the newest one from Morbid Angel Kingdom Sustained which came out in 2017 yeah through Silver Lining Records I, this album is brilliant, it's certainly better than the one before that, and the production on it is a lot heavier. A lot of people don't like the kick drum on this album, or the way it sounds, but I, I think it sounds spot on. What I don't like about it is the fact that the logo is black, but you can barely see it. And even holding it to my face, I can't see the D on the end. So it's a poor choice of colour for this. I mean, the album artwork looks really smart. Like the Titan smashing up the city. You know, it's full gatefold. The artwork there looks really killer. But that logo, what are they thinking there? Might make it white so you can at least read it. Uh, black vinyl. And yeah, I mean, it, 
this has got Steve Tucker on vocals again, and I was hoping to see them on tour with this album, for, you know, promoting it, but they cancelled it because they couldn't get Beezles or something stupid like that. So in the end, I went and saw Dave Vincent's cover band of all the classic Warp Angel songs. I had a great time. So hopefully I'll see them actually play this kind of stuff because it is really, really heavy. Um, and some of the song titles are hilarious, like Piles of Little Arms. And you think, well, what's all that about? Yeah. And the videos for it was just, just as weird. So that's the new Morbid Angel, or the latest Morbid Angel. And um, this one I'm really, really happy to get a complete blind buy on eBay. Um, I know what it is, I love the album, but I was very surprised to get it for this price. I think I only paid like 13 quid for it, Dutch pressing. And it's that album that used to feature Tony Omi, you know, when he featured for Black Sabbath. That's ridiculous. I mean, this is a Black Sabbath album on paper, but this is really Tony Omi doing his own solo project. And they kind of put Black Sabbath on there to kind of sell it, featuring, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, why would he feature for Black Sabbath when he started Black Sabbath? But there you go. Um, probably one of the worst album covers ever for a Black Sabbath album as well. Because you've got this really cool gothic -y demons and stuff like that around a big square picture of him in the middle of the desert looking lost or waiting for a bus. Very, very bizarre. And even on the back, he's still waiting for something. But it's such a good album. It's got Glenn Hughes on vocals, Eric Singer on drums, uh, Dave Spitz on bass. And yeah, some brilliant songs. I mean, it's not a Sabbath album, though. It's very much a Tony Iommi uh, solo effort. But it's just it's very bizarre to get this in my collection, because I love all these obscure Sabbath albums, but they cost a fortune. So when you find them really cheap, you just kind of have to, you know, bid for it and hope for the best. I mean, the inlay is really cool. I like the artwork there. I just don't understand why the front cover, they just used a picture of him looking lost in the desert. Or bored, even, you know. Very, very bizarre. This is an original pressing as well. I don't believe this has been re-released. I, I couldn't tell you. But there it is. There. So yeah, well happy to have that. I'll put that away in a little while. Um, so yeah, I've got a few CDs now to show you if you've stayed with me, thank you. This one was a gift from my friend Simon, who lives in Bristol. He does a metal podcast called The Metal Brethren Show. I will put a link below for that, so please check that out. Uh, he has uh, kindly sent me a copy of the new Infernal Sea album that came out this year called uh, <laughs> Negotium Crucis. Everyone knows how shocking I am at pronouncing album titles, so I'll obviously put my uh, dialect at the bottom for people to understand. Played with these guys a few times in the past for Consecration, I believe in their very early days. I mean, they, they, they're completely different now. They're like, you know, the real deal now. They've got the whole get up. Very atmospheric, very, very popular, playing some good festivals. But I remember playing with these guys in a place called Lowestoft, which is a seaside town here in Norfolk, in a shitty little pub with a wonky stage. And I think they were all just wearing band t-shirts and they were kind of just trying to find their feet and their style. Um, fast forward, probably nine years later, maybe 10 years later, they now sound like this. Brilliant, brilliant band. Got quite a few of their band t-shirts over the years because they do do some really good artwork with some really cool merch. I believe they use the artist who does all the Morpheus albums and stuff like that. So yeah, the Infernal Sea, definitely worth checking out. And then this one was a uh, very cheap CD I got off eBay from a really cool band. Gothic, doomy, symphonic almost. They kind of lost it after this album for me. Uh, from Norway, and I can never pronounce the name, Tristania with Widow's Weeds. Uh, came out in 1998 from Napalm Records. Could have been earlier than that though. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, you know, very, if you like that very early wave of gothic symphonic doom metal, kind of in that vein. But this one I really like. It's got the death metal vocals with the clean singing and then the symphonic female vocals. And it kind of breaks it up very nicely. And I didn't pay a lot for this, maybe £2. Um, and then after this album, they kind of lost it for me completely, and I'm not interested in them at all. So it's just literally this album for them is worth your time, in my opinion, anyway. So there's that one. And then this was a Discogs find here in the UK. Uh, quite a hard one to find, but this cover anyway. And that is Hate from Poland with their album Awakening of the Liar. 
pretty much a Vader clone, this album. Nothing different to anything from Vader. You know, you could pick up a Vader album than this album and you probably struggle to tell the difference. They are more now black and death metal in their newer stuff. But this has got some out fantastic riffs and the songs on it are blasty as anything really heavy uh what can i recommend you so like emulate the pope the scrolls it's just brilliant brilliant album really heavy and i discovered this quite a few years ago from my friend who had the dvd of them playing it live and i loved it and then yeah all those years later i now have a copy of it so that's hate and then this one, slowly people probably noticed, I've been trying to build up my November's Doom collection. I was able to find a copy of this really cheap. And that is Novella, the Novella, yeah, the Novella Reservoir. I can't talk, can I? Uh, this came out uh, in 2007 on the, the End Records. Pretty much no different to their other stuff. Uh, a bit more chuggy on this one, a bit more heavier in the guttural stuff. Songs like Rain which still makes me laugh because obviously when it rains this is the first song that comes up in my head still all these years later uh, and they were left to die is a really good song on this album if you don't know who november's doom are they're an american death doom band um if you're fans of my dying bride early paradise lost you know that kind of vibe you, you're gonna like november's doom very melodic um in the latter albums and they've got female vocals in there that kind of spice it up a bit so yeah definitely worth checking them out and sticking with the doomier stuff, I got this really, really cheap on eBay and I just thought I haven't got anything from this band and I probably should do. And that is the American Funeral Deaf Doom Band, Evoken, with their second release, Embrace the Emptiness. Came out through Solitude Productions in 1998. And yeah, it's Funeral Doom, really moody, slow, horrible sounding, very suffocating in the tone. Not for the faint-hearted, but I, I really enjoy these guys. Very much background music for me when I'm working. You know, I wouldn't drive with this on because I'd probably either fall asleep or drive off a cliff. So yeah, Evoken. And then this one was one of more of a nostalgic buy for me. I watched a documentary on Amazon by the band Kitty, which was a new metal band that I used to know of when I just started high school. And I think I had a crush on the drummer back then, depending on which haircut they had, because they had very edgy haircuts for girls. Um, and this is their album Oracle, probably their heaviest album they ever put out for me, more death metal vibe on this. And the track, what I always wanted is the one I remembered. And um, this was like pound eighty on eBay and I thought I need to have that in my collection because I did really used to like these girls when they were playing that more heavier, aggressive stuff. They've had many lineup changes throughout the years and that documentary kind of reminded me about them because I completely forgot they existed. And I didn't really know much about them because they must have been 10 years older than me when they first started out. I just started high school, so they were kind of cool to check out, because I was massive into corn back then when I heard these guys, and they had a very different edge to it, very heavy, and obviously being a female, it was more of a novelty thing to like them than the other bands, because they're all male-dominated, and then you've got these girls from Canada, you know, being just as aggressive and probably even heavier than those other bands. So yeah, Kitty. And the last one to kind of end off this video and kind of fits with this time of year, uh, Iced Earth's Horror Show. This is their kind of Halloween themed album where they do covers of more horror themed characters like uh, there's mummies, vampires, werewolves, uh, Phantom of the Opera, you know, all that kind of is it's obviously a, an album based off those kind of things. Uh, features a cover song by Iron Maiden, the uh, Transylvania track which is the instrumental one, really cool. Uh, but yeah, I love this album. It's got some brilliant riffs on it. Matt Barlow on vocals. When I Earth were just as heavy. Yeah, this is really hard to get on vinyl for a good price. I mean, it goes for like 50, 60 quid, if you're lucky. Uh, it came out in Century Media in 2001 by the looks of it. I might be wrong though. But yeah, listened to this album for years on MP3 and I found a good copy for it, so I had to have it. So yeah, I stir. So that's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, quite a bit going on here. Uh, I've got plenty to listen to. So yeah, thanks for watching. And thank you to all my new subscribers I've seen recently. That's been awesome. Uh, big shout out to all the guys that did my uh, 10 metal questions. You know, 
it's, I did them ages ago now in my head and it's quite cool when you see a new video pop up mentioning me and them doing their own version of it and it's just so cool a lot of them have been American as well which is awesome so you know you know the distance doesn't matter you know everyone's the same everyone loves metal and it's so cool to see them doing their own spin on it because they've all been different to mine and I've discovered some great new channels on that so thank you guys for that um, and yeah please subscribe if you don't already and until then I'll speak to you guys soon cheers